Good morning, this is David Cross, and I'd like to invite you to listen to God's Word in the Heaven Bound. I see a sea. Good morning again, friends, and welcome one more time to Heaven Bound. On behalf of the good folks here at Calvary Bible Church, I am Doug Benedict, and along with Pastor Jim Jenkins, who will be joining us just a little bit later on. We are so excited and just ecstatic, I believe I said that word right, that you are joining us today, and we do hope that you are getting something great out of God's Word. And we hope you do get blessed by the good Southern Gospel music that we've chosen just for you today. And we hope that you will come join us today if you do not currently attend a good Bible-believing church. One where they believe the Bible cover to cover and everything in between. We hope that you'll come join us. With this being the first Sunday of the month, we'll begin our services this morning at 9 o'clock with our fellowship breakfast. Everyone's invited to attend, so come on out and bring your appetite. Sit down, have some fellowship as we get ready for the services throughout the day. Then at 9.30, we will have Sunday school. And at 10.30, we'll have our morning service. And then at noon, we'll break for lunch. And today, we have something that we do the first and third Sundays. People bring some kind of dish to pass. And if you want to bring something, you're welcome to, but don't feel like you have to. Just come and enjoy yourselves, because at 1 o'clock, we'll have an afternoon service. Why wait till evening to have another service? Just stay and have another service with us today, beginning at 1 o'clock. And then Wednesday, we'll have our midweek prayer and Bible study, beginning at 7 o'clock, Wednesday evening. Some things to mark on your calendar. I know this is quite a ways ahead, but... February's pretty short, so it's going to be here before you know it. March 26th through the 27th. Brother Dewey Williams will be here with us. He is a real full-blown southern hillbilly that just loves God. He's a phenomenal speaker. So plan on coming out and joining us that week. And he'll get us ready for Easter, which is the following Sunday. So again, March 26th through 29th. Dewey Williams will be here, and April 1st will be Easter Sunday. I know a lot of you want to come to church on Easter, so mark that day. And just to make sure you don't forget, why don't you come this morning? Let's start practicing before Easter comes. So if you want to come, put in your GPS, 6968 Sweeney Road, Greg, New York. That'll get you just about here, but you will have to pay attention when you turn on Sweeney Road so you can follow these super easy, old-fashioned directions. Coming out of Boonville, head north on Route 12 and make a right-hand turn onto Burdick's Crossing Road. Coming out of Lowville, head south on Route 12 and make a left-hand turn onto Burdick's Crossing Road. Coming out of West Leiden, head north on 26, keep straight onto 12D, head north on Route 12 and make a right-hand turn onto Burdick's Crossing Road. And now just for the fun of it, if you want to come from Martinsburg, just head down the hill. I believe it's uh, Martinsburg Road or Whitaker Road. Drops you right off down by Marx's Farms. Turn right to head south on Route 12 and make a left-hand turn onto Burdick's Crossing Road. Take Burdick's Crossing Road all the way to the end. Make a left-hand turn onto Greg Road. Head up the hill and make your first right-hand turn onto Sweeney Road. And we'll be up there about 200 yards on the right-hand side. Now, if you want to come and you don't have a ride, give us a call at 315-348-6271 or send an email to cbclewiscounty at gmail.com and we'll line someone up to come pick you up. And all else fails, we do stream all of our services live at cbclewiscounty.com. Now, I'm sure several if you have heard this already. Unfortunately, I'm starting to hear it myself. People are saying you're getting kind of old. 
Well, do you know there's a message that is really, really old, but it is still valid today. But there's something that you need to do with that valid old message. So as Preacher gets ready to tell you about what to do with that valid old message, let's listen to the Clark family as they sang, I Made It Mine. Grandpa's been a preacher for many faithful years Preaching in a country church His Bible stained with tears He told about salvation's plan And how God became a man Growing up I heard this story Time and time again But I made it Mine, the story he was telling Of a Savior sent from heaven for mankind I made it mine I can't rely on Grandpa's faith To take me across the line By the blood it's washed away Thank God for the day I made it mine Grandpa's getting older One thing that's for sure The day will come he'll take a journey To the other shore I'll follow him when my time comes I met the one who loves His faith in God won't find me a crossing I'll go there because I made it mine The story he was telling Of a Savior sent from heaven for mankind I made it To take me across the line By the blood it's washed away I thank God for the day I made it mine I made it mine The story he was telling a Savior sent from heaven for mankind I made it mine I can't rely on Grandpa's faith To take me across the line By the blood it's washed away I thank God for the day I made it the blood it's washed away I thank God for the day I made it And that, good friends, was the Clark family, and I made it mine. Again, as always, we're delighted you're here. I know that Doug has mentioned about, he probably has mentioned about Easter. Easter is not that far away. It's only eight weeks. It's hard to believe. All right, we're through January. All right, we're through January. I didn't think we were going to make it through January, but we made it through January. This has been like... You know, and I've lived here since 1976, except for a year or so. And it's been one of the roughest Januarys I can remember. But we made it. We made it. And Easter's the first week of April, the first Sunday in April this year. And so we, we're really, we're not that far, we're not that far away. And so I just, again want to remind you about coming to church on Easter. 
resurrection of Christ. That song that we played this morning for you, I Made It Mine, there are a lot of verses in the Bible in connection with that. The Bible says this, the Philippian jailer said in Acts 16, 31, Sirs, what must I do? What must I do to be saved? What do I have to do? See, salvation is not in a church. It's not in some creed. It's not in works. It's to be found in Christ and Christ alone. I was watching an interview not too long ago of some really, he, he does not, he, he can't believe the Bible. He's a bishop. I don't even know what denomination he was. He was just a bishop. And he was denigrating the idea of hell. He said it was an invention of the church to keep people in line. Uh, the guy asked him, a news reporter, you know, what about accepting Jesus Christ as your personal savior? You know what a lot of these guys are? They're hoping, they're hoping that it's not true, that you have to trust Christ as your Savior. They're, they're hoping that it's not true, and they're, so they're trying to find any person who will agree with them. Now, what must I do to be saved? It's a personal question. What do I have to do to be saved? There are lots of uh, ideas, as I guess you could say, but again, our defining, our roadmap, our defining roadmap is the Word of God. It, that is what defines us. That is what tells us. That is what leads us. Truth. Things get old. People, people get old. You say, well, that idea about being saved preacher is so old. You know, things decay, things get old. I've known people, I, I know so many people, and it's like, man, it's like they get old. I, I have a pretty good acquaintance of mine, and and uh, and you probably know him. Brucey e. Crager lives over in Wildcat Road there, and he was telling me the other day he hadn't played He's about my boy's age, and he said he hadn't played ball in a couple years. Well, he's gotten older. People get older. It's hard for me to imagine how old I really am. And people say, well, this idea, they accuse Spurgeon of saying, well, you believe the same thing the apostles believed, but you haven't changed in 2,000 years. And Spurgeon replied to that, absolutely I haven't that the truth is still the same today as it was 2,000 years ago. And people say, well, this idea is so old, preacher. We are in the 21st century. We need to get with it. We need to have some new ideas. We need to have some different ideas about how to get to heaven. And the Bible is old and it's outdated and it's worn out, a lot like people get. And so we need something different. But the truth of the matter is that the Bible, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 7. He is the same. He does not change. He does not wax old. He does not get old. He is the same, always the same, always the same. Jesus changes never. He's always the same. Now look, people say, well, I think you need to get some new ideas. You guys got the same old ideas, old ideas. They're worn out ideas. Well, no. The question that the Philippian jailer asked, what must I do, is still true today. You see, salvation, going to heaven, how to get to heaven. So I said, well, how do you get to heaven from Great New York? Or how do you get to heaven from Lowville? Or how do you get to heaven from Boomville? How is it that you get to heaven? How does a person, what is the road that leads to heaven? And there's only one road. So, oh, no, wait a minute. Now, that's an old idea. That's an old idea. Well, absolutely. But Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. I am the way, the way. 
There is no other way other than the Lord Jesus Christ. So when the Philippian jailer said, what must I do to be saved? The truth is, there's nothing you can really do to be saved. Salvation, or being saved, which is a Bible term, which really means to be delivered, to be delivered from this life, we are going to cross over to the other side. If you're listening to me this morning, friend, you're going to meet God. You cannot escape that. You're going to meet God. Now, you can tell me, well, I'll tell God or I'll make some excuse. There won't be any telling God. There won't be any excuse. Question will be, is his name found written in the book of life? And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. In Hebrews chapter 4, or I'm sorry, Revelation 14 says the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. So while the concept is old and the plan is old, it's just as fresh today as it was 2,000 years ago. What must I do? What do I have to do to be saved, to be delivered, to miss hell? to gain heaven, call it whatever you want. People say, well, I, I don't want to miss heaven, preacher. That's good. Preacher, I don't want to die and, and miss heaven. Preacher, if there really is a heaven, I want to make sure that I go. What must I do? I'm convinced of this, that the Bible indicates, and I've, I've thought about this, I've asked God about this, I've talked to God about this, about a person, any person, trusting Christ. When are they saved? See, some people have the idea, well, you're saved if you make it. Now, I believe this, but Jesus said, he that hath the Son hath life. Or John said in 1 John 5, verse 12, he that hath the Son hath life, he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Every single person's eternal destiny is found in those, I believe there are 19 words, one-syllable words. You can't say, I don't understand it. There are 19 one-syllable words. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You say, well, that is so simplistic. Well, sure it is. Because God wanted salvation, the plan of salvation, the way of escape, to be simple. He didn't make it so complex that nobody could go to heaven. He made it such that even a little child can understand this wonderful truth. He that hath the Son. In John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18, he that believeth on the Son is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. I've said many times in church, I formerly thought that when you died, there was a pair of balances and that if your good outweighed your bad or your bad outweighed your good, whatever it was, that would determine in what direction you were going to go. But that's not what verse 18 says. He that believeth on the Son is not condemned. He that believeth is not condemned. There must come a place in your life where you're willing to believe. And I am convinced from Scripture that moment upon which, on which, and in which you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that salvation will be instantaneous that the Spirit of God will come and live within your heart. Old things begin to pass away, and all things will become new. Now, to get that, to believe that, the Bible makes it very clear that we have to change our mind. Now, change our mind means to, means to repent. That's what it means. We change our mind about our spiritual condition. We're lost. We have no hope. We change our mind about Jesus. He is the Son of God. He is the Savior of the world. He is our only hope. We change our mind about 
what to do with that. We believe it. The Bible says in John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe. You see that believe on his name. When we are willing to believe on his name, then we make it our story. We make it ours. The song that uh, we played this morning, I made it mine. See, you can hear this. Uh, may I say, and I'm going to anyway, uh, may I say that when I was younger, I had some idea about God. I didn't have a lot. I had some idea about Jesus and about him dying on the cross and rising again the third day. Now, I, that, that's about all I knew. I mean, really, that was it. I just, and I didn't understand a lot of that. It was not personal to me. We, I heard that this news report, well, you got to make Jesus your personal. See, salvation is personal. The Philippians said, what must I do to be saved? What do I have to do? Philip said to the Ethiopian when they were traveling in the desert, when he came up into the chariot and he, be, he began to preach unto him Jesus, they eventually came to some water. And the Ethiopian said to Philip, here is much water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? Now, verse 37 is an important verse, but most modern-day Bible versions take it out. And they skip right to verse 38, and it says, so something like to the effect that he and Philip went down into the water. They went down into the water. Kind of shoots a hole in the sprinkling idea, but they went down into the water. They leave out verse 37. When Philip says this, if thou believest with all thy heart that Jesus is the Christ, thou mayest. Because, again, the Ethiopian said, well, Here's some water. I like to get baptized. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, if thou believest with all thy heart, for whosoever shall call, that if thou shall confess with thy mouth. See, salvation's personal, friend. It's not in a church. I'd like to tell you, hey, come on over to Calvary. I'll guarantee if you walk through the doors, you're going to heaven. I can't do that. Hey, come on over. We'll fill the baptistry up. We'll baptize you this week. Get you to, into heaven. That won't work. Never has, never will. The Bible says that by faith, Abel, who was Abel? He was the fourth person, as far as we know, in the history of the world. By faith, Abel, Abel, by faith, Abel. Salvation, dear friend, is a personal coming to the place where you are willing to acknowledge and put your trust on Jesus Christ to get you to heaven. And dear friend, when you are willing to do that, he will save you instantaneously in a moment of time. Jesus said in John chapter 3, Marvel not that I say unto you, marvel not that I say unto thee, ye, ye, not your mother, not your father, not your brother. What's that song of old Negro spirituals? Not my, how's it go? It's not my mother, it's not my father, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Look, salvation you don't go to heaven because mama and daddy are. You don't go to heaven because brother or sister are going. You're going because you, you, dear friend, made that decision to make that story yours. What must I do to be saved? What do I have to do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on him. Trust him. Put your hope upon him. Believe on him. 
How's that verse go? I'm trying to remember how it goes in Acts 16, 31. What must I do to be saved? And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be. Not maybe, not could be, not possibly, not hope so, think so, guess so. But the emphatic word, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But it's a personal thing. You have to make it your story. You have to make it your life. And what are you willing to do? So that is a question that every man must confront. I said a little while ago, you are going to meet God. You will meet God one day. Are you ready? Are you ready? It's not the, well, mama and daddy are going, so I'm, no, 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 no. What must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Friend, I wonder today, whatever you're doing right now, if you might pause for just a moment, Think about this. You're going to meet God. Are you ready to meet God? There's only one way, and that would be Jesus. Right now. Maybe you're driving down the road. Maybe you're in the barn. Maybe you're just kind of waking up. Would you call upon Christ right now in faith? Understand, number one, that you're a sinner. You have no hope. You have none. You cannot go to heaven. Number two, Jesus made a way. He is the way. He is the only way. He is not a way, not one of many ways. He is the way that leads to eternal life. Thirdly, you must believe that. You must trust that. Whosoever shall call. Fourthly, would you call today? Would you ask him today, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I know it. Don't deserve heaven. But Lord, I'm asking you right now, Lord, save me. Come into my heart and save me right now. Take me to heaven when my time on this earth is done to live with you. I know I don't deserve heaven. I know that I'm a sinner. But Lord Jesus, come to my heart by faith. I make you my Savior right now. Look, it's just a simple prayer. Really, friend, you pray any prayer and you ask God, Lord God, I need to be saved. Lord, save me. God will see your heart. God will see your heart. That song we played today, I Made It Mine. The Philippian jailer made it his story. Paul made it his story. Sergius Paulus made it his story. Jim Jenkins made it his story. Would you call upon him today, friend? Would you make it yours? Do now what you'll be eternally grateful for one day. Call upon him today, friend. Trust him today. Because listen, listen to me. Truthfully, tomorrow just might be too late. Friend, did you say that prayer with preacher today? And did you mean it? Did you ask Jesus to come into your heart and forgive your sins today? Why don't you call and tell us about it? Our phone number here is 315-348-6271 or shoot us an email. That email address is cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. We would love to to hear about how you came to trust in Jesus or call those same numbers email that same address or even come today and let us know or come and ask more about how you can know for sure that you are going to heaven when you die friend we hope to see you today we hope that you will be at church filling that place in a pew that's only meant for you. Thank you again for joining us this half hour. Lord will, and we will catch you again next week.
on Heaven Bound.